Good morning, America. Today is the second day of March. It is Friday. It is 11.50. Today we're going to read Proverbs 26. Um, it has 28 verses, two colors. We have pink for witnessing and black for sin. No uppercase lettering. The Proverbs 26 is about Proverbs concerning fools, the slothful man, and the meddler. Fools, slothful man, and the meddler. We all know those people. The fool is the one who just has no wisdom, knowledge, and understanding at all. Uh, the slowful man is the lazy man. And the meddler is the scornful, one that constantly keeps trouble going. He brews trouble and he keeps the flames going. That is the meddler. And all three of them are undesirable to be around. Okay, so let's begin with pink for verse 1. As snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. As snow in summer, as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. Okay, not only is it not seemly for a fool, but a fool is hard to rebuck or correct or encourage. None of that is possible. Two is black. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. 3 to 17 is all pink for witnessing. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. Fools usually don't grow up being fools. They usually are fools from tender plants. So the rod is always the best thing for a fool. So hopefully you can uh, turn him or her around before it's too late. The rod is always the best um, thing for the back of a fool, a young fool, a child that is a small fool. Okay? A whip for the, for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. For answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. That's right. Sometimes when a fool says something, it's just best to not respond. No response sometimes is the best response. That also applies to disrespect. It is better to close your mouth, say it not, if it sounds disrespectful. Okay? Answer not a fool according to his folly, least thou also be like unto him. Five, answer a fool according to his folly, least he be wise in his own conceit. Answer a fool according to his folly, at least he be wise in his own deceit. So it's best not to answer. Because then you will make him think that he is wise in his own deceit. Okay? Conceit. Six. He that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. Yes, because they're not reliable. If it's an important message, you definitely do not want to pick a fool to send it. Somewhere along the way, from the time he leaves you to the destination, something will go wrong. They will be distracted, and mayhem may happen. You just can't rely on a person who's unreliable. So why bother? Okay, he just sent us a message by the hand of a fool. Cut his off the feet and drink his damage. Seven, the legs of the lame are not equal. So is... A parable in the mouth of fools. Amen. That should be easy to understand. Alright. The legs of the lame are not equal. 
If you're lame, something is wrong with your legs. One might be shorter than the other slightly. One might be uh, severely short than the other and you need a special shoe. But in the same fashion that they are not equal, so is a parable in the mouth of a fool is not equal. Uh, a, as he that bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. Absolutely. You are not to look at a fool and say you are a wise man. You are not to look at the wicked and say you are righteous. Okay. Nine, as the throne goes uh, up into the hand of a drunken, so is a parable in the mouth of a fool. Absolutely. We're talking about fools and meddlers and slowful people here. Okay, these are all wise sayings. As the throne goes up into the hand of a drunken, he may not feel it. He's drunk. So is the parable in the mouth of a fool. It has absolutely no meaning to him. He cannot comprehend it, nor understand it. Um... It's just a waste of breath. Okay. 10. The great God that formed all things, both rewarded the fool and rewarded transgression. Yes, this is our God. It's his prerogative. He can do as he pleases. Who are we to tell him who to love and who not to love? Who to reward and who not to reward? He does as he pleases. And whatever he does is right. Okay. 10. The great God that formed all things both rewarded the fool and rewarded the transgressor. 11. As a dog returns to his vomit, ooh, so a fool returns to his folly. Mm -hmm. It's like you vomit something you ate three days ago. You didn't wipe it up, you're hungry. You go back to that same spot that you're vomiting and you lip it, lap it up. Yes. It sounds nasty. It is nasty. But a fool will return to it. Yes. Twelve. See if thou a man wise in his own conceit, there is more hope of a fool than him. Yes. A person who thinks that they are wise and they are not, there's more hope for that fool. There's more hope for him who is a fool than this man who believes that he is wise. There's more hope for the fool. Okay, 13. The slowful man saith, there is a lion in the way, a lion in the street. That's all he would do. He just say there's a lion in the street. He won't do anything. He's a slow for man. He won't protect you. Why? He's a slow for man. He won't even get a weapon. Why? He's a slow for man. A lazy man will do nothing. Even if all he has to do is lick every pie that goes by. It's too much work for him to pick up the pie, put it to his mouth, lick it and put it back down. It's just too much work for a slow for man. If you have a slow for man, you will have nothing. If you have a slow for man, you will obtain nothing. Years will go by because as you know, time waits for no one. Death waits for no one. Opportunity waits for no one. And as you spend time with this slow for man, time will run by. You will get older and you will accomplish nothing. So it is, it's always best to leave that slowful thing where you find it, no matter how good it looks. The sluggish is wiser than his own consent, conceit than seven men that can render a reason. The sluggish is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. This is true. I just repeated that to you not too long ago. 7. He that passes by and meddles with strife belongeth not to him. It is like one that kindles a dog by the ear. Of course. If you're passing by and there's some confusion going on, it has absolutely nothing to do with you. And you're meddling into something that has nothing to do with you. 
Okay? You are like the one that takes a dog by the ear. 18 and 19 is black for sin. As a madman who casts firebrands, arrows, and death. As a madman who casts firebrands, arrows, and death. 19. So is the man that see, deceives his neighbor and saith, Am not I in sports? As a man who casts firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceives his neighbor and saith, Am not I in sports? 20 to 22 is pink for witnessing. Where no, word, where no wood is, there the fire goes out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strap ceases. Absolutely. If you don't have a meddler in around, you don't have a scoffer around, there's no strap around either. You won't have any of this chaos going on if you don't have a meddler or a scoffer around you. Chaos will not exist. 21, as coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strap. As coal are to burning coal and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strap. Yes. His presence will bring about strap in the same way that coal will burn and wood will burn in fire. All right. 22, the words of a tail bearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. This is the soul. The words of a tail bearer. Tail bearer is one who tells secrets are as wounds because those secrets are precious. They may be harmful to the one who hears it. It may be something that has been long kept. And once it is heard, it may wound someone. So, for the wise, if you have a secret that you know will one day wound a person, it is best that you tell it to them while they are small. Let me repeat that. If you have a secret that you know could wound a person, it is best to say it to that person while they are small. Don't wait until they're an adult to tell them something that is important. And definitely don't wait until someone else says it to them. Because secrets are not always secrets to just you alone. Many people may know your secrets. But only those that love you will keep your secret. The words of a tail bearer are as wounds and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. So if you have a secret that when the individual finds it, it will go into the innermost parts of their belly, their soul, it will hurt them. So it is not good. To keep certain secrets forever, it is good to eventually share it with the one who will be wounded the most. It is your responsibility to share this secret with them before someone else who likes you not shares it with them. 23 to 28 is all black. Pay attention. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a Pot herd cover with silver draw. Yes, Lord. Burning lips and a wicked heart. Neither one of us are desirable to be around. Or like a pot herd cover with silver draw. 24. He that hateth dissembling with his lips and lies of deceit within him. He that hateth dissembled with his lips. And lies up deceit within him, yes. If he hates you, he will let you know with his lips. And with his heart, he will devise mischief against thee. 
25. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Absolutely. <laughs> there's no, there's never just one wicked soul or one wicked thing or one wicked spirit in a man. There's usually more than one of them. <laughs> okay? And all seven of them together can, can be a curse unto thee. Okay. When he speaketh fair, believe him now, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Set 26. Whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be shown before the whole congregation. And this is true. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. That's why I tell people, don't go around digging ditches for someone else. Guess who will fall in it? You will. Don't roll a stone for someone else. Guess who it will fall upon? You. So, whoso diggeth a ditch shall fall therein, and he that rolls a stone, it will return upon him. Last one, a lying tongue hated those that are afflicted by it. That's a tale bearer. Will tell your secrets. Why? Because they don't like you. So it is better that you beat them to it. All right, a lying tongue hated those that are afflicted by his lying, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. Okay, so watch who you talk to. Watch what you say to your elders. I talk about this all the time. It's an epidemic today. All right, and read the words of God. It is your shield. It will protect thee. Thank you very much for listening to us here at Spiritual Water. Today is Friday, the second day of March. Tomorrow is the holy day of the week. It is Saturday, a day of rest. Our Lord rested on that day, and he expects us to do the same. So if at all possible that you can rest tomorrow, make it a restful day. And you will be prepared for the beginning of of the week which is Sunday thank you very much have a wonderful weekend and as always may the peace of God be upon thee the protection of God surround you and the will of God come from thee thank you